All right, we're moving on to the sliding filament theory of A.F. Huxley and H.E. Huxley. These two ain't related. Now, I'm going to use some diagrams from my textbook right here because it's easier to explain things. So, I'm going to use this diagram right here. Ah, right, here it is. The events that occur during muscle contraction. So, we start at the resting stage. Actin and myosin are prevented from interacting with each other because of something called a relaxing protein. Now, troponin and tropomyosin, they form a complex, which is the relaxing protein. What tropomyosin does is, as you can see right here, it covers the actin site where the myosin head can bind to. And here, troponin I is bound to actin. In the next step, calcium is released from the terminal cisterns and it binds to troponin C. This causes weakening of the bond between troponin I and actin. Thus, tropomyosin moves laterally and exposes the actin site, as you can see right here. Also, ATP hydrolysis by way of ATP's enzyme activity occurs in myosin, and this produces energy. Note that for each calcium troponin C bond, there are seven binding sites open on actin. Now, the exposure of the active sites causes the release of calcium and as you can see the myosin head binds with actin at a 90 degree angle this causes the formation of a cross bridge at this point energy which is stored in the myosin head is released along with the ADP and inorganic phosphate now what happens here is that the movement of the myosin head is known as swiveling and this causes the actin filament to slide over the myosin filament Next, the ATP, a fresh molecule of ATP, is brought in to the myosin head and at the same time, a fresh calcium molecule is brought in to troponin C. This is necessary for the cross bridge to detach. Once the cross bridge is detached, myosin reactivation occurs when ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and an inorganic phosphate. At this point, a cross bridge will reform and myosin will once again swivel. This process will continue as long as there's calcium present to bind to troponin C. But once calcium supplies have been depleted, you go back to the first stage where the actin, it slides back over myosin and goes back to the resting position. Once again, troponin I and tropomyosin, they make a troponin tropomyosin complex which is also the relaxing protein and what the relaxing protein does is it inhibits interaction of actin and myosin. It's important to note that a single cycle of attaching, swiveling and detaching shortens the muscle by 1% and the maximum shortening that can occur or the maximum amount of contraction that a muscle can undergo is 30% of its total length. This diagram shows the mechanism of cross bridge formation or basically a single cycle which consists of attaching, swiveling, and detaching. Here the myosin head is not attached but once calcium binds to troponin C and ATP is hydrolyzed, the myosin head is attached to the actin. Then myosin releases the energy as well as the ADP and the inorganic phosphate and it swivels. When it swivels, the Z lines come closer. There is one Z line here and there would be another Z line here and when the myosin head swivels as this one swivels so would another myosin head on this side and so the two Z lines would come closer like this and once the myosin head has swiveled then a fresh ATP comes and attaches to the myosin head and a fresh calcium ion comes and attaches to troponin C and this allows for detachment of the cross bridge hence you have a complete cycle which consists of attachment, swiveling, and detachment.